Hey, it's attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about who needs cybersecurity insurance. As a small business, you may have heard about cybersecurity insurance. You may have already had it marketed to you by whoever provides you business insurance. But if you haven't, what cybersecurity insurance does is, well, you know, insures you against cybersecurity problems, but we're talking about hacking, we're talking about ransomware, we're talking about someone stealing the data from your business or creating downtime for your business because of some electronic interference. The idea of this coverage is to cover both you and whoever owns the data. So what we're talking about is damages of the, that are physical damages because computers are not uh, computers are not usable and you have to get new things. We're talking about lost revenue because your website was down. We're talking about the time and energy and expense it took to get everything back up. All the damages that you might have related to that hacking, but also. There may be damages to your clients or customers because their data was stolen, because someone used that data to harm them. And depending upon your kind of business and what contracts you have with them, you may have some liability for the damage that was caused to your clients or customers. If you are thinking about getting cybersecurity insurance or whether or not it's applicable to you, first you have to look at what's your particular risk. In some industries, you're not a very controversial business. You're not a very publicly seen business. You're not a business that has a lot of fancy data that has a lot of trade secret data of yourself or other clients or customers, and you might not be a big target. Any business can be hacked, but you're not particularly a big target. Now, in some industries, you are a target for hackers because they know who you are, you're very public, you take controversial stances on things, you may have a lot of trade secrets, especially stuff that belongs to your clients or customers. And in those industries, it may make sense to spend the money on this kind of insurance where for somebody else, they don't have a huge amount of exposure and so that expense may not be worth it. They may want to do do-it-yourself remedies. This kind of insurance is expensive because the harms can be very large and because the people who get this insurance because it's not required tend to be the ones who get so you have to get a quote for your particular business and see if it's even something you could possibly afford to do. You also have to look at what are they going to cover? There's probably going to be some kind of deductible before they'll cover anything. And then they're only going to cover it in certain situations. It may be that the kind of situations you have aren't part of this policy. And so it's really not worth it to you. It may be that the expense of this policy is so much that you could just take that money every year and put it into cybersecurity for yourself. So you have to look at the costs and benefits. It's not something that it makes sense for every business. My tip for you is that before you even think about whether or not you need cybersecurity insurance, you need to look at all the do it yourself things that you can do to protect your business from being hacked from cybersecurity interference. I talk about some of those things in another video. Even if you get cybersecurity insurance, it is not a replacement for your best practices behavior. Most likely, even if you get that kind of insurance, they're going to require you to engage in that in those good behaviors to protect your electronic information and assets. So you might as well go ahead and do them first and in congruence with looking at this insurance. Again, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about cybersecurity, cybersecurity insurance, and how it applies to your business, feel free to ask that question below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. And if you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like more legal tips for small business owners, startups, and entrepreneurs. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.